All right, guys, well, welcome on in. I'm super excited for you because, you know, if you're looking at this video, chances are you're gonna go try ice fishing for the first time. And I will tell you, ice fishing is a whole nother experience. It's just different, it's fun. And, you know, even if you've been fishing for years and years, this is definitely a type of fishing that I highly recommend that you try at least one time in your life. Uh, you know, it's just it's just so different to be standing on the ice fishing straight up and down fishing through a hole You know never knowing what's gonna come out of that hole today We are going to cover the basics of ice fishing 101 for the beginner aspect um, So we're gonna go through uh, What we got what I recommend that you should bring we're out here right now at this beautiful Central Oregon Lake. We're in Central Oregon. It's frozen over right now. There's snow all over the top of it and we're going to get out there and we're going to catch some fish, but we're going to show you how we do it. Go through each individual little thing one by one and uh, hopefully you'll go out and you'll try this awesome sport. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over what I think that you should bring on your first ice fishing adventure. Uh, rule number one is definitely dress warm. You know, I've got multiple layers of pants. I've got uh, a couple of shirts, a couple of sweaters, and a jacket. I'm definitely prepared for if it starts to get really bad and blizzardy out here. Um, you'll notice that I actually don't have gloves on. I'm kind of a weirdo about that. Uh, I don't know. I've been born and raised in the mountain area, and I just, I never wear gloves even in cold conditions in early morning when I'm getting wet and everything, but it is a good idea for you to bring your gloves. Uh, for example, Jason behind the camera here, he's got his gloves on. Um, he was probably a little smarter than me. I recommend that you probably bring a pair of gloves. Uh, a couple other things that I would definitely recommend that you bring, uh, maybe some scissors to cut some line. That's always a good good thing to bring along with you. Some pliers to remove some hooks or even just a hook remover so that you can get the hook easily out of the fish quick. Um, you're gonna definitely wanna bring a hatchet. Now this is, this is gonna be for cutting into the ice. So you can bring a hatchet, you could bring a maul, you could bring a striker bar, uh, or even an auger. If you've got an auger, that's probably the best thing for ice fishing. But we're gonna go really simple today and I just brought my hatchet. We'll just use it to cut a hole into the ice. And then obviously we're gonna need to bring a tape measure so that we can measure how deep the ice is and make sure it's safe. Later on in this video, we're gonna go walk over to the ice and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna proceed out onto the lake safely and make sure that nobody gets injured during this adventure. So you're gonna wanna definitely Definitely make sure to bring a tape measure. You could bring a ruler if you wanted to. Uh, you need to be on at least four inches of ice. So if you've got a ruler and it's 12 inches, anything past 12 inches, you're not gonna really need to worry about. I like to bring a bell. Uh, you know, the, the rod's gonna be kind of just sitting stationary and you can kind of move around a little bit more and this guy's gonna let you know when you get a bite. So a bell's not a bad idea to bring along. Uh, some kind of rod holder I would recommend. Now, this rod holder is going to stab into the ground, and I don't know that we're going to get to use this today. There's a lot of snow on the, on the uh, lake right now, and so we can kind of pack snow and we can, you know, stuff this in there. It might hold, it might not. So I would recommend that you maybe bring a couple of different rod holder styles. Uh, I've got this one here that's just a tripod, so obviously we don't have to stab anything into the ground. We just set it on top. This is gonna work really good out there if we have trouble. Uh, and I'm again, I'm kind of weird and crazy. I bring a jack, like I have lots of these and they work really good as ice fishing rod holders. They're a little heavy to carry out there, but you know, it's same same concept though. We've got that tripod type situation this one's actually got four legs but same idea it's going to sit on the surface not have to get stabbed through the surface and then another one that i brought if we're able to actually get this inside the ice is a jaw jacker so it you know it goes down like this and the rod sits at that low profile over top of the hole and when the fish comes along it just jacks their jaw and sets the hook for me obviously i'm not going to need a bell if i'm able to use this because i'm going to see that my rod shot up and a fish is gonna be on there. If you get one of these and you use a jaw jacker like this, I definitely recommend that you loosen the drag a little bit so that 
you know, when the fish gets hooked up, when you're not at the rod, it doesn't just take the rod into the ice hole. Instead, it's able to take line. Uh, but that, you know, a rod holder, bringing a rod holder is going to definitely be a, a good bet. You could pack snow and kind of make your own little rod holder if there's snow on the lake, but it's a good idea to bring that gear. Another thing I would recommend, uh, I don't have it in the shot with me right now because Jason's actually using it, but I'd recommend bringing a chair. You know, it's going to keep you up out of the snow uh, or even a cinder block or a piece of wood, something that's going to let you sit instead of having to be right inside the snow. Uh, moving forward from that, uh, maybe a backpack is, is a good idea too to just carry all your extra gear because you are going to be treading through the snow and on the ice and the more trips that you take you're going to get more tired and more tired. Uh, if you have a sled that's definitely a good idea so you can throw everything in your sled and you can kind of just pull it along the lake. Um, I like to always have some extra drinks and things like that in my backpack um, and obviously all of this gear that you see is going to store inside the backpack and it's going to make it easy management for me. From there, guys, let's talk about like bait selection. So we are fishing for trout today out here on this lake. And so there's quite a few tried and true methods for trout that are going to work even right here through the ice. Things that you would normally use for trout that aren't really going to work out here today is things like lures and stuff like that. You could do jigs, uh, but mostly everything's going to be this straight up and down presentation. So you're not going to have a chance to throw a lure and retrieve a lure, things like that. So a lure is not going to be the greatest bet. But trout absolutely love power bait or a doe bait. This is something that has worked forever. And as a beginner into the trout scenario, I definitely recommend that you get a, a few different colors of doe bait because they're they're a excellent method for catching trout as you can see here i've got just another color same thing doe bait and even inside the backpack there i've got like 20 different colors that doesn't mean that i think you should go to the store and you should go buy you know every color on the shelf keep it within a budget but make sure you've got some different options because you may go out there and it's like everybody tells you, oh, they were biting on chartreuse. But then when you come out here today, they want yellow or they want rainbow, something like that. So it's going to be a good idea to have a couple different options to be able to switch to. Another thing that works really, really well for the trout is just your classic like Potsky salmon eggs. Um, it's not like salmon roe where it's, you know, multiple eggs. They're individual eggs. You can use like a treble hook and put one egg on each of the little uh, barbs of the treble hook and this works really really well for trout it's going to be a lot like running the power bait with the exception that the power bait does float so we're going to keep that in mind too for our rigging to make sure that they stay away from each other stays away from the weight other hooks that we might be running uh, but yeah so the, the eggs are going to sink and the power bait's going to float Another thing is night crawlers. You know, trout definitely love a good old worm, a night crawler, and that's something that you should bring. I actually forgot my night crawlers with me today, which is silly. Uh, but if you do bring night crawlers, I would recommend getting a worm blower so that you can fill that night crawler full of air and we can get that worm to float up off of the bottom and be visible from a longer distance away than just sitting down inside of the weeds. Uh, I actually have this great video the, on floating a night crawler and you can definitely go check that out on my channel it's really simple you just stab the needle into the the worm and fill it full of air and now it's going to be more of a presentation like a power bait where it's going to float so these are well worth it they're only like two dollars and fifty cents to get one uh, i always have one inside my bag one other thing that i would recommend bringing for your first time ice fishing is maybe a shovel uh, you know, today we've got a lot of snow out there on top of the ice. And so we're going to use this to kind of clean open our area, be able to look at ice when we're testing ice and maybe even a pathway for us to, you know, move back and forth on and off of the lake if we need to uh, go back to the car or anything like that. But a shovel is a good bet instead of treading through a whole bunch of snow and getting yourself super, super tired. It's also a good thing that maybe when you're on your way to the lake, you know, if you get stuck, a shovel is always a good thing to have. Moving from there, guys, we're going to talk about our rod selection and what we're going to use. So I'm going to use this Okuma Avenger. Uh, it's a trout rod. It is a seven foot. It is a medium to light action. Uh, it has a medium power rating and it 
is rated for, let's see, it, it was uh, eight to 17 pounds. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna catch an eight pound or 17 pound trout today, so it's gonna get the job done for sure, but it is still kind of a medium action and that's gonna let that rod tip move quite a bit and I'm gonna be able to see that bite really easily instead of a super, super stiff rod. Um, we're just running the uh, Okuma Avenger reel on this. This is the AV3000 uh, and we've got a spool of 12 pound monofilament in a clear range. I like to use the monofilament for the ice fishing because your water is definitely very clear within the ice and so I like to use a monofilament, a clear monofilament, it seems to help. But then not only do we have the rod running with a 12 pound mainline monofilament like this right here, but I've also got a six pound leader so that where the bait presentation is at, it's actually even smaller and gives me an even better chance of the fish not seeing it in this clear water condition. These are two things that I definitely recommend that you bring along with you as well as just some extra line. This is going to be good stuff to have inside the, the box. Uh, and then Jason is going to be using this little quantum micro. Um, you know, a smaller rod is definitely a good thing. And they do make ice fishing rods that are like two feet long. Uh, they're just little guys like Doc Demons. And, you know, you don't have to have those tiny little ice fishing rods to go ice fishing. You can certainly use like my seven foot Okuma right here. It's going to get the job done too. Jason has chose to run a little smaller selection today. Uh, the last time you guys saw this rod was... Uh, on a 15 pound carp definitely go check out that video on how to catch carp and we put this rod really to the test again i don't think that we're going to catch a 12 pound trout today so the fact that this handled a 12 pound carp i think it's going to work just fine for the trout that we have today um jason has got a i believe a 12 pound braided line on this little micro light uh, and then he's going to be running out a leader that's going to be a smaller size too to up the ante of the fish not uh, being able to be seen. And we're going to actually tie this rod up and show you the setup. On my rod right here on the Okuma, we have got the setup already rigged. So we'll show what this looks like and then we're going to go in and we're going to actually tie this. So at the very start of it all, we have this crappy rig is what this is called. I've got a brand new one right here inside the packaging. Okay, and what this does is it has a swivel up on the very, very top. It runs down to a metal frame that allows a bait to come off. It goes down a little further to another metal frame that lets the bait come off. And, and then eventually down to a, another uh, swivel, in this case, where we're going to put our weight. We're going to run the weight what's considered drop shot today, which means the weight is on the very bottom of the system because we want the weight to be down inside the weeds and we want the baits to be hanging out up above the weeds where the fish are going to hang out. But this is a pretty simple setup. It just goes from the swivel. There's our little guy coming out to a uh, size 16 treble hook because we're going to fish with power bait today. And then down to the next one, same thing, another leader coming out to a treble hook and then running down to a one ounce cannonball weight is just clipped on the bottom. I've also heard these called dragon ball weights, um, but you know, it's just a round weight with a, a little loop on it for me to clip onto that clip swivel. And that's gonna hang out down at the bottom like that and our baits are gonna be hanging up, up, up above. So earlier when I talked about the power bait floating, these little leader lengths right here, this is where we have to be really careful because you know these baits are going to be floating. So this is what I was talking about by keeping them away from each other. This leader is not long enough to end up getting caught up inside this other uh, metal guy. And then this guy is going to come up here and it's just a little bit short of the swivel so that it doesn't grab the swivel. That's going to help us with frustration. going to make for a much better fishing experience for you. Now we're going to go through tying this setup. So we're going to take our crappie rig and we're just going to pull it out of the package. I've already got one right here pulled out of the package, ready to go. Okay. And the first thing that I like to do is I'll go down to the clip swivel on the very bottom of it and I'll put on my cannonball weight and clip that on there. 
The reason why I like to do that is because now that I've got some weight on the bottom of this, I can kind of manage and maintain it a little bit easier. So then I have pre-tied up some very, very short leaders. They're only that long right there with a size 16 treble hook onto it. And then we're just gonna simply tie each one of those leaders onto our bait spreaders right here. I like to use a fisherman's knot. Uh, you can go check out the channel. We've got lots and lots of different knot videos uh, and find what knot you like best. Uh, I think that we've got something like 20 or so knots within our library. And now I've got my first bait leader coming out from the spreader. And then I'm just going to tie on my second one right here. You know, you could use something like a double clinch knot. You could use all sorts of knots. Uh, this is a good strong knot. Again, we're not going to be catching anything that's super, super giant today. This is only a six pound monofilament leader. Uh, so I think that the leader might break before... Uh, the, the knot's going to break if we catch ourselves a big giant fish on it. But so there we go. I've got the two different leaders. I got it hooked on me here. I got to get that undone. So we've got our weight coming down to the bottom there. We've got our first bait leader. We've got our second bait leader. And then the only thing we have left is we have a barrel swivel up on the top. And then we're just going to tie that right onto the main line of Jason's little micro light right here. If I can grab a hold of the line. There we go. So we'll just trim off that little tag end right there. And this is completely ready to fish. We've got the two different bait loops. Or sorry, the two different bait leaders down to our dragon ball weight down there. And we just drop this inside a hole. So now we're going to go over, guys, and we're going to start taking a look at the ice. And we're going to show you how to safely make sure that you can get out on the ice. And we're going to start fishing. All right, guys, so what we've done is we've just kind of come down here right to the edge of the water. We don't want to go too far out because we are trying to make sure that we are safe. Uh, and, you know, if we fell in right here, we might fall into maybe a couple of inches, you know, a foot, a foot of water or so, something that's not going to be totally detrimental and kill us. So we've just come right to the edge of the water. I took my shovel and I just cut down some of the snow here so I can reach the the level of the ice so that I can begin to test it. So now I'm just going to take my hatchet and I'm going to start cutting into it so that we can get ourselves a, a check with the tape measure. So I'm just going to start chopping into it, working my way down. Ooh, and it looks like there's some slushy right there. There's still ice down in there. There's a slush layer to begin. So that's interesting. There's two layers of ice here. Yeah, because there's a whole nother chunk of ice down underneath of that. I still have not hit the bottom. But there is two layers of ice here, which is interesting. Definitely something that I want to know about before I head out there on the water. But right here, though, already, I'm not at the bottom. I'm still chopping down in there. Uh, but I'm, I'm already got to be yeah, eight, nine inches right there. So there's lots and lots of ice. We're going to proceed out a little bit further and start to kind of get into our spot where we want to fish. The basic rule of thumb, though, you're going to want to cut into the ice you're going to want to check the ice step it's got to be at least four inches for it to be safe i personally like around six or so give myself that little bit of buffer so as i'm moving around and i maybe find a spot that has thin ice you know if it's two inches thinner than the normal everything around it's still at four inches you know but what you want to do is you want to go out about a hundred to 150 feet and you want to recheck the ice depth Keep doing that to make sure that you are maintaining safe all the way out to wherever you're going fishing. And even when you get to the spot that you're going to fish, you still want to check that ice depth because that's where you're going to be hanging around. That's where you're going to set up chairs, gear, and everything. And you just want to always make sure you're safe. I do also recommend bringing a buddy 
notice I'm not alone today. I've got Jason behind the camera and just having two people out here. I mean, this is a long ways away from a hospital or any kind of help, and it's a frozen terrain, so time is of the essence if anything happens, you know? So, but we're gonna bump out a little bit further. We're gonna check the ice again, and we'll be fishing before you know it. All right, guys, so I got a little bit spooked out. You know, I, I didn't go the whole 150 feet. I only went another like 50 feet or so and I cut another hole because that that last hole um, and what I found was there's a layer of five inches of ice and then there's like a pocket of like an inch of water and then there's more ice underneath of it uh, upon measuring that first layer it being five inches of ice and you're safe on four I decided to bump out further we're now out here in you know pretty much the middle of the lake we're we're out quite a ways and now we're seeing um let me grab that camera really quick jason now we're actually seeing that there is quite a lot i don't know if you can see here we go uh there's there's quite a lot of of ice and uh i actually took my trusty tape measure and i stuck it down there and it is about 15 16 inches of ice which is more than enough we could drive our truck out here i'm not going to drive the truck out here but we could drive the truck out here so it's definitely plenty of ice it was a good bet though to be better safe than sorry before i proceeded too much further out here um, and the last little tip i kind of wanted to give you guys is to make sure to bring some kind of strainer or you know i cut the top of a two liter off on this and after you kind of cut your hole you know you're going to have chunks of ice and things like that that are inside the hole and this is going to let you get those out of there and clear up this hole so that you can fish from it now as far as getting fishing down inside this hole uh, what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to use some power bait um, we've got lots of different colors here so i'm going to go with two different colors i'm going to start with a garlic and I'm going to start with a yellow, which also has a garlic scent. Take our little treble hooks here, and we just form a ball around the treble hook to bait up this hook. So we'll just take some of this yellow here, and we'll just kind of wrap it around this hook, and we will ball it up around that hook, and that one there is ready to go so then i'm going to take a different color because i've got the two different hooks here in oregon we're allowed to have three we're only running two today but you can run three and when you're ice fishing if you have a two rod endorsement you can actually run up to five rods here in oregon definitely make sure to check your regulations before you go and uh, go fishing but so then we're just going to take our second one that got a little bit extra there we'll give that to jason and i'm just going to ball this one around and now we've got two different colors going on there so that we can kind of try two different things. So now we're just gonna take this and we're just gonna drop the cannonball weight into the hole and we're going to allow that to fall all the way down to the bottom. And then once we feel the bottom, which we're fishing in about 20 feet deep of water here, 18, 20 feet, somewhere around there, but once we feel the bottom, I've got the bottom there. Now we're just gonna bring up the tension. So there I'm at the bottom. And then I'm going to just crank up like four or five times, just a little bit so that I'm sitting up. And then I'm going to take my trusty jack, which is basically a rod holder, remember? And we're going to lay that down over top of the ice hole. And we wanna try and have the tip of the rod be pretty center to the ice hole. And we're just gonna fish that for a little while and see what happens. All right, Jason's got one. Oh, I just pulled up my whole line. <laughs> oh no, he's got his drag set a little too loose. Oh, oh, I'm getting bit. I got a fish. <laughs> yeah, Jason's got one over there and I'm getting bit. Hopefully, I'm not in Jason's line. I was getting bit. Dude, that's a nice fish, apparently. Feels like it. Hey, look at that. Right on. Good work, Jason. Hey, there's 
not a big one, but it's a fish. There you go, some organized fishing. Yeah. Well, there you go, guys. There's the tips and techniques for going out on the frozen lake and doing some trout fishing. I hope that it helps. I hope you enjoy this new sport that you have just started to get into. The wind is really kicking up and I think we're gonna get out of here. Definitely make sure to smash that thumbs up. Give me a subscribe if you like this video. And one last thing before we go, guys. Definitely if you enjoy ice fishing, check out this video right here where Jason got himself a real nice one right out here on this particular lake. And until next time, guys, we'll see ya.